Day 3 at Madex 2021 here in Busan, South Korea. Today we're looking at sonar technologies from South Korea as well as naval aviation and we're taking a look at some of the international exhibitors on the show floor. We are now on the booth of SonarTech, a South Korean company specializing in sonar systems. Yes, I explained the, our product. The first one is the active and passive dual purpose sonar buoy. So this sonar buoy is the world first dual purpose, which is can operate both active mode and passive mode. We are going to finish this job end of this year. Then maybe our Navy, Korean Navy will accept. You mentioned it is a world first, yes. but uh, as you may know, uh, the company Thales also is uh, developing a product called Sonoflash, which is a uh, both active and passive snow buoy in one system. Yes. Uh, so can you confirm this is the first time yes. that uh, you unveil this product and that you are first? The difference of the sonar flash by Thales and our uh, dual purpose sonar buoy is the shape of the, the passive sensors. The Thales, it looks like an umbrella, but our passive sense is, uh, generally speaking, is like shapeable, we called it this diaper sensor. So we made this active sensors and the diaper sense in the same container, we call the SLC. That one operate at the same time, simultaneously. It make multi-static ASW environment. This product is for ROK Navy, P-8, P-3, maritime patrol aircraft, as well as uh, helicopters for ASW. I think so, because this product is uh, funded by the, our government. That means our government will use this sonobuy in the future for conducting ASW mission. All right, so now we are in front of the model of a seaplane. This is very interesting because the seaplane is uh, dropping snow buoys. Yes. What can you tell us about this project? Uh, this is the uh, two companies project. The Aron company and Sonatex is it's a kind of a general concepts. We used this uh, weak ship, we call weak ship, W-I-G. Uh, this platform is very uh, very, very low price and very fast uh, and can launch a sonar buoy from the bottom of the hull easily, quickly. This is just a concept, but I think maybe next year we are going to start to develop this uh, new system. Are you discussing about uh, this project with ROK Navy? Yes, uh, many ROK Navy officers and have uh, interest in this new concept. The third innovation that uh, you are showing uh, here at Madex 2021 are these new consoles and uh, you told me they are for the mine hunting ships of the ROK Navy. Yes, right. Uh, this new console is a part of the sonar system installed in MHC class, uh, mine hunters in Kamla Fleet, Lock Navy. Uh, as you know that uh, we have mine, six mine hunters, MHC class, but the sonar system is very obsolete. From 2018, SonarTech started to develop this sonar system uh, composed of the console system and transmission and uh, receiving part. We almost finished this development and in late of this year, we are going to use this new sonar system uh, to into the MHC class in Lockley. And you explained to me, thanks to the new technology, yes, uh, you bring a 3D view of the sea bottom for yeah. the operator. Uh, thanks to the new technology, acoustic technology, we add the 3D targeting system. So in this case, we use a 3D target dimensional program, algorithm, new algorithm. So uh, a mine operator can classify the target's height and widths and any other uh, information. So it is very easy to classify uh, mine or not. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. Local company Kai is showcasing 
two projects for which it's recently been awarded contracts. The MAH Marine Assault Helicopter, the contract was awarded by DAPA in April. And the MCH Mine Countermeasure Helicopter for Mine Warfare, the contract was awarded by DAPA in March this year. So the MAH and the MCH will both be flying from the LPH class, the Dogdo class and the Marado of the ROK Navy. The MAH will be used for airborne amphibious assault. And the MCH, as I said, will be used for mine countermeasure airborne. The company is discussing with uh, Northrop Grumman to uh, fit the ALMDS, Airborne Laser Mine Detection System. It is the white pod you can see on the right hand side. Kai is also discussing with three companies for mine disposal systems. These companies are Atlas Electronics of Germany, BA Systems of the UK and ECA Group of France. Uh, in order to integrate mine disposal devices on board the helicopter, uh, you can see it inside the scale model of the MCH. Kai is also showcasing, of course, its flagship product, its latest fighter, the KF-21. There are rumors of uh, a possible naval variant for stobar operation from the CVX light aircraft carrier. Unfortunately, no one at Kai wants to confirm those rumors or even comment them. However, on the side of their booth, they are showing an interesting earliest impression showing the CVX launching KF-21s. Lacroix is in Korea, uh, in fact, more or less since 1903 for the development and deployment of uh, Dagai, conventional Dagai MK2 program. And so that's what we are promoting at MADEX. The goal for, uh, for Lacroix is also to place Silena at some moment. So we have a lot of discussion with the shipyard, Korean shipyard, and we go to export with the Silena. Uh, with the uh, Hyundai Heavy Industries and the uh, DSME and we have also agreement uh, and ongoing uh, export program together with ANWA system. From 2018, thanks to uh, President Che from uh, TS Tech with our partner now, we uh, identified the opportunity also uh, to put Silem Silir NG Munition uh, on upgraded uh, Arbok launcher. We expect this program uh, of upgrade to be decided uh, pretty soon. This is our decoy launcher and ammunition. It's a reserved to corner reflector. Nowadays, uh, most of uh, modern anti-ship missiles have a very sensitive seeker. So it can distinguish a real target from trap decoy. That's why we select corner reflector as uh, RF decoy. Uh, it has omnidirectional features, so it can make our system to more cost sensitive because we don't need to use trainable decoy launcher. As you see, this is our control panel. Basically, it offers three different operational modes. If we select auto fire mode, Everything is gone by built-in software. And also if you choose a uh, manual mode, operator can decide uh, all, uh, everything on the fi on, uh, about the firing by themselves. And also our system can support multi language and have a built-in uh, test environment as an also logging system. American company Raytheon has a big presence at MADEX this year. They are showcasing full-scale models of some of the missiles for the KDX-3 Batch 2 programs of the ROK Navy. Those are the Aegis Destroyer. The ROK Navy will be getting IAMD, Integrated Air and Missile Defense, a new capability for them, thanks to the SM-3 missile, which is an exo-atmospheric interceptor. The SM3 Block 1B interceptor has an enhanced two-color infrared seeker and upgraded steering and propulsion capability that uses short bursts of precision propulsion to direct the missile towards incoming targets. It became operational in 2014 
deploying for the first time on US Navy ships worldwide. The KDX-3 Batch 2 will be fitted with SM-2 Block 3B as well, and possibly the new SM-6 multi-mission missile capable of long-range fleet air defense, sea-based terminal defense, and anti-surface warfare. The decision to procure SM-6 has not been made yet and will depend on budget. Raytheon is also showcasing in the form of a large poster its Phalanx series or close-in weapon system. The Republic of Korea Navy is procuring two of those for its KDX-3 Batch 2 destroyers. The FMS for those, or the possible FMS for those, was approved in December 2020 last year. I learned during the show that Raytheon is also looking at providing Phalanx for the FFX Batch 3 frigate of the Aroke Navy. Raytheon is also showcasing this interesting, to me at least, depiction of the LPX-2, that's the program known today as CVX, the Light Aircraft Carrier Project of the ROK Navy. And this particular depiction shows the new SPY-6 radar, that's the new radar of Raytheon, fitted on board the vessel with three arrays, one forward and two aft on the specific mast for the SPY-6. And of course, uh, the F-35V air wing on board. Uh, the SPY-6 is the new radar for the US Navy. It will be on the majority of surface vessels of the US Navy, uh, the destroyers, the frigates, uh, the future aircraft carriers, as well as the LHA's uh, amphibious vessels. Neil, can you tell us about uh, Babcock's history here in South Korea? So Babcock's had a, a really long history in Korea and recently we've expanded that by opening a new facility to undertake repair and overhaul. And we've appointed a vice president for Korea, Clinton Bixter, who's here at the show with us. And we've doing that mainly to support the um, submarine programs that we provide. Neil, can you please tell us about uh, Babcock's involvement with the uh, ROK Navy CVX Light Aircraft Carrier Project? So with Babcock being part of the ACA, and you can see I've got my ACA badge on today, supporting the other UK partners in the ACA to export that technology and know-how that we bought up through QEC and helping the ROC Navy learn from our lessons so they have success in their CVX program. What is your opinion about uh, the commitment of uh, the UK uh, as a whole uh, to cooperate with the ROK Navy for their aircraft carrier program? Can you tell us anything about it? ACA is uh, Aircraft Carrier Alliance and that was the consortium in charge of uh, designing and producing uh, the two Queen Elizabeth class uh, carriers. Yeah, so I think there's very good support from the UK government in how do we export the knowledge from QEC. And we're very much working with UK government. You know, Korea and this region was identified in the defense review. So we're working with them, as you can see, with the presence we have with the UK pavilion here, with the Babcock stand. It's very much something that we're working together to bring that experience to the Korean Navy. All right, Neil, thank you very much. Thank you very much, it's been a pleasure.